When you're a kid, your parents have all the answers, whether or not they do. And then there comes a time when you realize your parents don't have all the answers to the questions that you've posed. Not only that, you reach a point where you've posed questions where nobody has the answer. And this is a, this is a point of intellectual maturity that is terrifying. How could we not know the answer? How is that possible? What? How? And if you look through the history of unknowns in our culture, that is a fundamental role religion has played. Religion of all stripes. You go back to ancient Greece, we call it mythology, but it's really their religion, all right? You know, Zeus and, and Neptune, not Neptune, uh, Poseidon. And so there's a storm. I don't know anything about storms. I don't know anything about the Coriolis force or the, the, or the, the ocean atmosphere connection or moisture and, and relative humidity. I don't know anything about any of that yet. Poseidon is angry. The lightning bolt hit. Zeus is angry. Those are my explanations and I'm done. Now I don't have to live in some kind of profound state of ignorance about the world around me and its effect on my life. After death, I have no idea. Am I actually rotting in the ground? No, you are in some other place. You're on Valhalla or heaven, whatever the religion provides for that belief system. You cannot become a scientist if you require that every question has an answer. Because it's the very questions that have no answers that attract you to the laboratory every single day. So there's got to be some kind of a shift. Part of it is you never really grew up from, as, from childhood because you're always asking questions. But you've successfully made the transition to say, here's a question not only did my parents not know, nobody doesn't know. And I will then set up an entire lab just to find that answer. And when you do find that answer, that is one of the greatest moments that can happen in a scientist's life.